A mom shared how her life was torn to pieces the day her husband said he didn't feel right. Before we continue with the rest of the video, we could use your help. Click that like button to help spread the word about Watch JoJo, and also be sure to subscribe and click the notification bell so you don't miss our future videos. For many of us, starting a family is one of the biggest ambitions we can have as we get older. Indeed, countless people will attest that there are few things more rewarding. Gary Menkel would have been among them, as he and his wife Angela had a young clan of their own, and they had no idea how quickly their dreams of a happy life could be shattered. Residents of North Bend, Oregon, Gary and Angela were the proud parents of four children named Alex, Taylor, Jaylee, and Landon. But in the years before that, though, the dad had very much been focused on his education. During that period, he had seemed to have a firm grasp on what he wanted to do in the future. Gary had apparently set his sights on becoming a dentist, which eventually took him to Pennsylvania. While studying in the Keystone State, he first crossed paths with his future wife, Angela, leading to their nuptials in 2009. After that, the pair settled down in North Bend a few years later with their four young kids blissfully unaware of the misfortune that fate had in store for them. Indeed, all appeared to be going well for the Menkel family, with healthy 39-year-old Gary heading into work as per normal back in September 2018. He'd been due to carry out a root canal on that particular day at the practice. However, while conducting the procedure, the dentist started to feel a bit unwell. Had Gary always wanted to be a dentist? Well, during a person's younger years, they'll most likely harbor a number of different ambitions for the future. Whether it's achieving a certain personal goal or scoring their dream job, those plans can help drive them forward for a lengthy period of time. Gary Menkel could definitely attest to that. Born in Pocatello, Idaho, Gary and his five brothers and sisters grew up alongside their parents, Carol and John Menkel. The future dentist spent his formative years in a number of different places as the family traveled to both Nevada and Oregon. Following all that upheaval, the youngster eventually concluded his school studies at South Salem High School. However, that didn't signal the end of Gary's education, with the Idaho native then earning a place at Oregon State University. While there, the student took classes in both chemistry and biology, and thanks to his hard work over that period, he went on to receive diplomas in the two subjects. Off the back of Gary's graduation, he looked to continue his studies in one particular area. To be more specific, he had eyes on a potential career as a dentist at that point. To realize those ambitions, the postgraduate student secured a place at Philadelphia's Temple University School of Dentistry. As Gary pursued his latest qualification, his personal life almost took a very promising turn. During his time at the dental college, the student also first made the acquaintance of a woman named Angela Jenkins. After that first meeting, the pair subsequently formed a romantic relationship growing ever closer as time went on. True love blossomed, and Gary and Angela lives became much entwined in the summer of 2009. The couple tied the knot in a Utah church before returning to Philadelphia. Due to his commitments at the university, they settled down in the city, but once that period was concluded, the husband and wife eyed a move. Following Gary's graduation, he and Angela packed their bags for Klamath Falls, Oregon. The graduate also earned his first job in dentistry at that time, holding on to the position for half a decade. Then in 2017, the married couple made another significant move as they bought a house in North Bend. Alongside Gary continuing to establish himself as a dentist, he became something of a family man as well. Together with Angela, they welcomed four children into the world, naming their oldest child Landon. From there, the duo had their first daughter, named Jaylee, ahead of the birth of Taylor, about two years later, Gary and Angela added one more face to their family after the birth of baby Alex. And despite his work, the former looked to spend as much time as possible with his young clan. Indeed, away from dentistry, he had a real love of the great outdoors, sharing his passion with the children. All things considered, Gary's life appeared to be in a good place in 2018. As for work, the dad was employed by the South Coast Family Dentistry Practice in North Bend. And one fateful September day, he arrived for a shift as per normal, ready to carry out a routine procedure. No one, however, could have predicted what happened next. Gary began to feel pains in his torso during the procedure, to the extent that he opted to call Angela at home. Later on, the dentist's wife recounted everything that transpired following that conversation. By writing a lengthy post on the Lifestyle website, Love What Matters. My healthy 39-year-old husband called me from work 
Angela recalled in the post. He was performing a root canal when he felt off. He asked me to drive him to the hospital because he thought he was having a heart attack. Given that terrifying news, the mom quickly sprang into action. Angela was at home with two of her children at that time, so she tried to get in touch with one of the neighbors. The mom had hoped to drop the kids off there before heading to the medical facility, but she got no response. With no other choice, the devoted wife instead then loaded the youngsters into her vehicle and drove off. Once we realized that Gary was going to be in the ER for a while, I had a friend come and get the kids, Angela wrote. I didn't want them to have to be there and witness all that chaos. In the hours after the children had been collected, their mother faced an agonizing and lonely vigil as she waited for any updates on her husband's condition. Angela recounted to Love What Matters, After hours in the ER, the doctor met me in the hall with tears in her eyes. I pointed my finger at her and told her to tell me right now what's wrong with my husband. The words she uttered took my breath away. He has a tear in his aorta. It's catastrophic. Off the back of that devastating news, Angela had an unimaginably difficult task ahead of her. She went to see Gary in his hospital bed, with the dentist still awake. His partner then informed him of the situation, but he couldn't afford to panic as that would have caused more damage to his heart. Angela explained, Gary couldn't freak out, but that didn't stop me from falling to the floor and crying as hospital personnel walked around me. It was determined he would need to be life flighted to a hospital in Portland, more equipped for the severity of the surgery. At that point, the mom received some calming words. Sam, the life flight nurse, grabbed me by the shoulders and looked me straight in the eyes, Angela wrote. He told me that his job was to keep Harry alive. He told me he was great at his job, and he had confidence in delivering my husband safely to skilled surgeons that would fix him. Grateful for that pep talk from the nurse, Angela prepared to say goodbye to Gary before he was loaded into the helicopter. Given how serious her husband's condition was, the pair also considered recording a message for their children. However, the dentist's emotional reaction prevented them from completing it. With everything in place, Gary's journey to Portland, Oregon then began. As for Angela, she needed to travel to the medical facility via her car, which took around four hours. While she was out on the road, Sam kept her up to date with the situation in the sky as well. Following the helicopter ride, Gary was given a chance to speak to Angela on Sam's cell phone ahead of the operation. I told Gary he was my most favorite person ever and that I loved him so much, his partner recalled. By the time that she arrived at the hospital, the dentist's surgery was already underway. When I got to the hospital waiting room, two nurses came out crying. Angela wrote on Love What Matters. Is Gary dead? I screamed. They quickly reassured me that he was still alive on bypass and in surgery. They told me the longer he was in surgery, the better, and they drew me a diagram of where the dissection was. Following the exchange, Angela had a pressing question for the hospital staff. She continued, I asked them if Gary was going to be okay. They couldn't answer me. The minutes went by in slow motion. I couldn't eat or sleep. At this point, my two beautiful friends showed up to be with me. As Angela noted, her family were en route to Portland at that stage, hoping to get there in the morning. Meanwhile, the mom would need to wait for another eight hours before she received the next update, as Gary's operation continued. With the clock ticking, she decided to grab the attention of the nurses. After being summoned from the operating room, the hospital staff then informed Angela that Gary's procedure had been a success. The dentist's wife was absolutely delighted with the news, believing that things were going to turn out well. Tragically, though, that didn't prove to be the case, as the doctor quickly confirmed. Angela told Love What Matters, the surgeon informed me that Gary was conscious entering the OR, but as soon as they got him under anesthesia, his aorta tore completely and he coded. They performed CPR as they were opening him, but he was without oxygen for five minutes. He told me it was a miracle he even got him that far. Alongside that devastating news, Angela was also told that Gary would suffer with severe cognitive and physical disabilities if he stirred from the coma. From there, the North Bend resident visited the room ahead of some other required medical procedures. I sat next to his lifeless body and encouraged him to keep fighting, that I would never be okay without him, she said. Unbelievably, things only got worse for Angela when her family finally arrived in Portland. She continued, my mom showed up and she was hysterical. She immediately pulled me out into the hall and said, 
your sister died last night. It took a few minutes before my brain could register the words my mom was speaking. Then, with that awful news still ringing in Angela's ears, the physician provided an additional update on Gary's condition. Unfortunately for everyone concerned, it wasn't a positive announcement. Indeed, he suggested that the family should prepare to say their final words to the Idaho native before he slipped away. Looking back, Angela detailed her last few moments with Gary on the Lifestyle website. The mother wrote, I went into the hospital room as the neurologist performed multiple tests to check for brain activity. Tears filled the neurologist's eyes as I looked at him and said, he's gone, isn't he? Yes, he was gone. Following that heartbreaking moment, Landon, Jaylee, Alex, and Taylor went to see their dad one final time. As for Angela, she stayed with Gary until the life support equipment was switched off, leading to another difficult situation. The man showed up to take his body to the hospital morgue, she continued. Angela recalled, I looked at him directly and said, I know to you Gary's just another body, but to me and my children, this body means everything. Please take good care of him. He assured me that he would, and he gave me a hug. In the wake of this double tragedy, someone decided to step up for Gary's family a couple days later. To try to help the bereaved relatives, a friend of Angela's set up a GoFundMe page in the aftermath of Gary's untimely passing. To help support the family, they set a target of $50,000 on the fundraising website. To date, the page has brought in almost $36,000 in donations, with more than 400 users contributing to the total. Meanwhile, Gary's funeral was held on the morning of September 14, 2018. The service itself took place in Sandy, Utah, before the dentist was laid to rest at Larkin Sunset Garden Cemetery. And for those back in Oregon, a remembrance ceremony was set for the following week at a North Bend church. Now Angela resides in West Jordan, Utah, with her young family, following an offer from her brother-in-law. After the two tragedies, he invited them to live in a newly renovated apartment that was put together in their old basement. The gesture was certainly appreciated, even though she dubbed it Option B. Yet, in spite of all that had happened, Angela managed to end her Love What Matters story on a positive note. She concluded, You better believe I'll do everything to make sure option B is worth living. I'm doing this for my sister, my husband, my kids, and most importantly, me. I deserve a beautiful life, and I have the ability to create it.